welcome to Astro Energy with astrologer angel Shelley Overton. Welcome to the Astro Energy Show on Blog Talk Radio. My name is Shelley Overton, and I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida. I am happy to be here with you today. I'm excited to get to our readings, but first I'm going to talk a little bit about astrology. So we've got a lot of stuff going on in the sky right now. We have a lot of planets in uh, water and earth, and I know last week I talked about this, and we still have them, but um, I'm going to go around the chart here and talk to you about what's going on. And let's see, first off, the moon just went into Libra today, so uh, literally two hours ago. So the moon is at two degrees, and um, so that means we're going to be focusing more emotion on relationships, partnering. Uh, cooperation and balance let's see our thoughts are going to be more lit up with ideas as well we have Uranus at 20 Aries and he is direct so he's moving forward he's looking to also create some ideas and make things happen through imagination through bringing information in from the collective so also known as channeling Aquarius or Uranus, the ruler of Aquarius, is really good with keying into collective thought and understanding the collective consciousness. So we, as we get more into the forward motion of uh, Uranus, we're going to be seeing more people acting as groups. And I was just looking online this morning and I, you know, I saw a couple posts about the, um, there's a women's March. I believe it is this um, Friday might be Saturday. I have to look, but I didn't realize how big it was. It's all over the country and actually North America. So that is a prime example of what's going on with this energy. We also have uh, Jupiter at 22 of Libra, and of course that energy is also in alignment with um, having an expansion around women's issues because the ruler of uh, Libra is Venus, so we're going to have a stronger connection to women. Um, Hang on one second, I was just uh, looking up. The and I don't see it. I was just going to look up the actual information on the March. Um, I saw it this morning, but I can't find it now, so that's okay. Um, anyway, uh, Jupiter is expansion and it's everything that the Sagittarius energy is, so it is infusing Libra with that kind of energy. It's learning about relationships, expanding awareness around what it takes to get along and what it takes to get your needs met, which is Jupiter. And then um, we've got Saturn. Actually, there's a sextile between Jupiter and Saturn today, and it's within one degree of exact. So we've got that coming up, and I'm going to look here and see Jupiter, Saturn. I don't see it on my little cheat sheet here when it goes exact, but it's coming up. So, um, yeah, let me. you know what? I've got an ephemeris here. I'm just going to look it up. Uh, So Jupiter's at 22 Libra and Saturn's at 23 uh, Sagittarius. So they will be exact when? Ah, you know what? Saturn doesn't get to 23 in time and Jupiter moves to 24. So they're probably not going to join up until... Actually, I think they may, may have already joined up. Let me look. 21, 21, 22. Nope, Saturn's just moving at a different way, a little bit faster. So I think that happened at the end of last year. But when Saturn goes retrograde or Jupiter goes retrograde, there will be more opportunity, I think. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to match up, but they are within one degree. So um, anyway, that means that we have this expansion around ideas, which is Jupiter in Libra. And it's also connection to other people and partners and Saturn and Sagittarius is saying, okay, let's move forward. Let's 
create the structure around the system and the organization that can make that actually happen. So it's a really strong energy around the potential of relationships, partnerships, and people from other cultures are long distance. So, um, and also educational opportunities, a lot, a lot of uh, strong energy around that. There's some energy around um, doing more, uh, oh, let me see here, Hang on, um, education around, I think I said that though. Um, yeah, I'm just trying, what I do when I take a break here is I, I'm kind of reading the energy of the symbols and putting together a story from the energy of the two symbols. So Saturn normally in a natural chart, Saturn rules Capricorn, which squares Libra. So um, he has the energy of strictness where, and which can be separating and Libra is ruled by Venus, but it is in square to Capricorn. So it is cooperative. So there could be a little disconnect there, but in sextile, it's the most cooperative energy. So um, Sag and the beauty is Jupiter rules Sagittarius, which is where Saturn is. So you've got that strong connection. So it really is about cooperation and creating uh, business or personal structure out of the partnership and looking for that to work out. And it can be expansion. It means um, there could be transitions of some sort, but it's more in a positive vein. So it's about expanding your understanding and awareness and maybe even your spiritual understanding of the connectedness of people. And then we have Mercury at three degrees Capricorn, and he is in square to the moon today, actually right now. And again, it's structures, it's saying things in a precise way, it is being taken to task for saying exactly what you mean, not adding flowery langu language, not uh, adding hyperbole, but being very uh, down to earth and strict about the structure of speech and what is being said. Uh, Capricorn is a really truthful energy in a sense of, well, I shouldn't say it isn't necessarily truthful as much as dogmatic, which means that um, it's very, well, it might be truthful. It's a sign that doesn't add flourish. It doesn't um, add creative energy to anything. It's very what you see is what you get. So it isn't an energy where you don't speak your truth. You speak your truth or you get punished if you don't. So, um, yeah, and you better say it correctly with proper grammar too when you say it. But um, anyway, so Mercury at Capricorn now, he is still in the shadow period until the end of the month. I believe I marked off the calendar here so I would remember when it goes. Or actually, you know what, I, I take it back. I marked off the Venus, which is going to go retrograde in April. So let me just see when... Um, we clear the shadow. So it looks like, I'm sorry, I didn't have this prepared and I don't have the ephemeris for the end of last year. So I don't know what degree, I think it was 13. So I think he's going to clear his shadow at the end of the month. I've marked the 23rd. So I'm thinking that's probably it. So, and then Venus goes retrograde in March through April. It doesn't clear her shadow till the end of April. But she enters the shadow on the 30th of January. So it's going to be a long spring, late winter of Venus issues about love and direction of relationships and money as well. So uh, Mercury and Capricorn also thinking about uh, how you're going to create something new, what you're doing with your career. And um, as Mercury goes forward through um, the next 14, 15 degrees, he's going to meet up with Pluto, which means there's going to be a discussion that could change structures around business and anything Capricorn touches, which is, of course, also um, a, like the business place, workplace, anything where there's an authority figure, so a boss, a principal, um, anywhere, government, you know, a new president. It'll be interesting. <laughs> So Mercury is going to bring out words and express the ideas of not only the structure, but also of the change that has to happen. 
because that is what Pluto does. And Pluto comes into our lives and basically knocks us on our ears a lot of the time. It takes away things and challenges the structure, challenges the dogma, and tries to help us expand and let go of what's unneeded and make decisions. It's a, a sign of our excuse me, planet of commitment. And in Capricorn, it's basically saying you need to make a decision, which way are you going to go, and it's going to be a major life change. So those of you who have strong Capricorn in your charts, ever since 2007, um, you've been feeling this strong energy. Everyone has Capricorn in their charts somewhere, but where are your plants? If you have Sun, if you have Mars, if you have Saturn, um, any of those, Moon, you're being hit by this Pluto, which is saying the way you've done it before isn't fulfilling. It isn't giving you what you need to be a strong individual. And you're being asked to let go of a lot of that. Um, the whole idea of clutter clearing is really strong right now. And if you've been clutter clearing, I'm telling you, everybody I've been talking to has wanted to clutter clear and have been clutter clearing, including myself. And so, um, a major shift of goods and material wealth is going on right now with people who are saying, do I need it or do I not? And get rid of it if you don't. So um, that's a really strong energy of Pluto in Capricorn. Now, Mercury joins up uh, around the 29th of this month and is a pretty strong day for planetary energy. So the 29th, Mercury is with Pluto. And then there's also... Um, I see today's the 17th. Oh, and it's 11, 11. So make that wish. Um, means the angels are listening. <laughs> so Mars, Saturn are square on the 19th, which is in two days. And Mars is at 22 Pisces and Saturn is at 23 Sagittarius, which also means of course that there is a connection of an inconjunct to Jupiter today, which is at 22 Libra. So Mars at 22 Pisces and Jupiter at 22 Libra. So that's a very uncomfortable energy. Again, it's transition. It's around um, taking action towards the idealistic viewpoint. So whatever's at 22 in your chart, that will be triggered. But also um, the subconscious, your dreams. You'll be getting lots of stories in your dreams right now. We've got Neptune, Venus, and Mars all in Pisces, along with the South Node. And so uh, the South Node is past dreams, past karma, past lives coming in. And wherever the South Node is in your chart, it shows you where your uh, past life is, what you're really comfortable with energetically. And you tend towards you using that as baseline. And the North Node is where you're heading. North Node is also a fortune spot in your chart. It is it's kind of like the South Node, your karmic history. And the North Node is where you're aiming for in this life to learn those lessons. So right now, the North Node is in the healing slash work sign of Virgo. And it can also be the military. So um, it's at three degrees. So let me see. Uh, Mercury is in positive aspect to the North Node and the South Node. It's in sextile to the South and trying to the north so mercury is helping us express and materialize the energy surrounding past lives and manifesting what we're familiar with but also growing towards the future and healing so um, and it's about discussion so today is a really good day to discuss where you're heading um, we've got let's see i didn't finish up with the sun the sun's at 27 degrees capricorn Interestingly enough, of course, he goes in to um, to the next sign, to Aquarius, on the 19th also, which is the evening before the inauguration. So we have a shift from this um, strong, masculine, authoritarian energy, which is traditional and old school. It's where we've been. It's what we know. It's archival. It's, uh, you know, you get the picture. It's just really stable going into Aquarius, which is anything but stable. And that means that on the 19th, there's a chance that we're going to see some storms because that's what we get with Aquarius <laughs> because Aquarius rules storms, electrical uh, energy and the Internet. It is mass uh, people getting affected by this. So 
Um, I haven't looked at the weather lately, although I know I think a couple of days ago over the weekend there were some storms coming across the country. I don't pay much attention. Um, I just kind of focus locally, but this is a national thing because the sun shines its light and affects us in that area of the sky. So it's shining the light on the area of the sky that affects wind because it's an air sign. It's strong winds, it's storms, it's tornadoes, electricity, lightning, all of that stuff that goes with that intense energy. It's also clear ideas and clear thinking and bringing in new energy you know, fresh energy. It is the next step after we've clutter cleared. Now we're looking at the place being clear. Now what do we do? Well, we have to have some ideas in what direction to go. So we're going to feel that this week. And then um, it's probably also going to be chaos. It's the masses um, having a say. Right now, sun is in sextile to Mars. So the energy is about being um, more of the the power structure, you know, whatever, whatever the authority is, they have the power right now. But when sun goes into Aquarius, the power goes to the people. So it's not the authority figure, but it is the masses. And so, um, yeah, the month of Aquarius is really interesting because we celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day yesterday. And we also have President's Day coming up and – Lincoln, and I believe it was Lincoln and Washington, were born in Aquarius, which is the sign of the people. So it's not surprising that we see people who rise up in the collective consciousness at this time. And um, definitely we are doing a lot of projection right now. And um, yeah, I won't get into <laughs> that political side, but um, it is interesting to note that we project our fears onto whoever we focus on and that could be celebrities it could be political figures it could be whoever's in the public eye at the time and so whatever it is that we need to focus on we put it out there and project it onto the other whatever is in our environment it's mirrored back to us so um, whatever we see that is where our fears are or where our hopes are or what issues that we choose to deal with as a collective. So that's all I'll say. Anyway, South Node at three degrees Pisces. Again, it's karma. It's the past. It's the past story and it's past desires. It's life vision. It's your dreams coming true. And Neptune is in Pisces at 10, so it's really close to the south node. So we have some old issues, old karma coming up, and probably old loves coming into our lives, or old stories around loves. And then uh, Venus and Mars are within 8 degrees of each other. And so they're coming into orb. Venus is acting in tandem with Mars. So it means that whatever the vision we have, like our idealized vision, it can be an addictive uh, connection, like addictions come up and we feel those same yearnings and longings for something that we've had, or it's a familiar yearning and longing that we're like, oh yeah, I remember feeling this way before. And now it's right there being presented to us in the form of a sister, a brother, a mother, a father, a woman, or a man. Because Venus is women, sisters and mothers, and Mars is men, brothers, and fathers. And it doesn't have to be father. It could be grandfather. It could be an uncle. But um, men and women of significance. So they're coming back in and they're joining up together to express a lot of our subconscious desires, because again, Pisces is about the subconscious. It is the 12th house ruler, which is the ruler of the hidden. So we're digging deep. It's a water sign. Neptune rules it. Neptune's in that sign. And so it's bringing out these deep emotional um, past stories, and especially with South Node, past life stories. So um, we're learning also how to be really in touch with spirit and our subconscious. So it's about dreams and meditation. And it's about telling the story for the collective also because Neptune's such a such a slow moving planet that he triggers the energy of 
um, multi, like over, like I think it's 14 years of a generation. So for 14 years, people will have Neptune in Pisces. For 14 years, Neptune was in Aquarius, and we had children at the millennium born with Neptune in Aquarius. So that is the beginning of the consciousness shifting through youth through the next to the next phase and um the millennials are the catalysts for shift and change towards a more collective uh movement in the world toward uh it's a small world after all so yeah that's coming in and that's where we're at i don't have any of the asteroids on this chart but mars in conjunct to jupiter means that there is difficulty with the dream of the relationship it isn't and because mars is at the last eight degrees of the zodiac it's going back into aries so at 22 it's wrapping up the last second of that particular sign so in the first 10 it is pisces the next 10 is cancer and the last 10 is scorpio scorpio ruled by pluto it is the energy of change and shift so mars at 22 in conjunct Jupiter is talking about shifts and changes around relationships and um, getting our needs met on a greater scale, on a more spiritual scale, which is also Pisces. So it's connecting into the religiousness or the spiritual side of love, basically. It's agape love. It's connecting to the ideal love. And that, of course, ultimately is love of self and connectedness to God or source. So that's this week in a very wordy manner, but um, I'm going to take a quick break and then we're going to get straight into the calls because we have a lot of people who want to get through and talk to me and I'm excited to talk to you. So we will go to break and I'm not going to force my little ad on you (laughs) before the break. I will um, give you a little bit of flute music. So here, I'll see you in a little bit.
Welcome back. This is Shelley, and you're listening to the Astro Energy Astrology Show on Blog Talk Radio. I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida, and I am available for readings. If you go to my website, astrologerangel.com, you can find my reading options there, and I look forward to talking with you personally. So let's get over. Actually, let's make sure that we have a way to do charts. There we go. And we'll get to our first caller. Hi, 608. This is Shelly, and I hear myself. So if you could turn that down in the background, that'd be great. Um, I, I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. You don't have, you're not listening to the show? Not in the background, no. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, um, who is this calling, and what can I do for you today? This is Jill. Let me go upstairs and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, this is Jill. Okay, great. Have you called before? Um, Gosh, it's been a year and a half ago. Okay, I think it isn't under this phone number, so we'll just take your information again. Okay. Um, Okay. I was born December 17th, 1960. Okay. Okay. 7.45 a.m. Okay. Waukegan, Illinois. Okay. And uh, what can I do for you today? Um, I've gone through a lot of changes. I relocated to another state. Um, uh-huh. I needed to start all over again and get rid of all my toxic relationships. And right. I'm in a state of a lot of anger. Okay. Lately. Yeah, yeah, I can. I I know that feeling. It's coming out a lot right now, and part of that is the Mars position. It's really playing on our subconscious. Okay. But, um, okay. Well, I'm trying to find Waukegan on my atlas, and I'm not finding it, so I may not be spelling. Oh, there it is. Okay. W a u t i g e n. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so we're good. Let me just make sure I've got a... Okay, so you're going through anger, and is it that you want to find out what's causing the anger, or you know what's causing the anger? No, I know what's causing the anger, but okay. it's all coming up now for some reason. But well, I've made a major life, major life change, and I, I'm getting rid of all the toxic people because I grew up in an extremely dysfunctional family. Uh-huh. Well, uh, let me look at your chart real quick here. Okay, so you've got Saturn on your Sun in Sagittarius, and it's in the 12th house. Not only are three planets and Chiron all in Pisces really triggering subconscious, but you've also got uh, that energy with Saturn in your 12th house, and it's really strong asking you to look at what your sense of self is around what went on and really shore up who you are and what you need as a person, which is probably why you're clearing house of all these people, right? Yes. On on top of that, you have Pluto in the sky on top of where Saturn was in your chart, which is 17 degrees Capricorn. So that, again, like I said in the opening of the show, when you have Pluto hitting something in Capricorn, especially Saturn, and it's just past your Jupiter, you're going to be clutter clearing for one, and it's in the house of identity. So it's clearing out a lot of the junk that you've carried around as baggage in your life. So what you're doing is you're saying, you know, this isn't working for me anymore, like you just said. I mean, you kind of gave yourself a reading, honestly. Uh, This is what's going on in your chart. It's mirrored there. So is there something you want me to encourage you with? Yeah, okay. Because I have so much um, repressed emotions because I was so abused all my life, I was born with gifts, psychic abilities, mediumship, healing gifts. I mean, when I can get to that place, I will knock your socks off. And I've been blocked from actually doing stuff with it, you know, and I want to get to that place because I should be using those gifts if they were given to me. Absolutely. What's blocking it? Um, 
Well, I could tell you it's a person, but it's not a person. It's definitely internal, and it's your own subconscious, honestly. Uh, right now, Saturn's in there. It's your view of how free you are to use those gifts, and it's about the ego. That Saturn on your sun is your own ego, so the ego will trick us into believing that whatever our fears are are actually going to happen, and those are real. They're not They're real. Not real. They're means of protecting you from the hurt that you experienced experience before. before. So, so that is probably, probably what's going on there. I think, I think Jupiter, Jupiter moving into your, your not, let's see, 10th house, house, which is the mid which is the heaven, heaven, and it's, and it's the, the career, career section of your chart, of your chart. that's going to happen, gonna happen really, quickly. really quickly. Let me see here. Let me see here. And I don't know if I can go on much longer with the call only because I keep hearing myself. And it's really difficult to give a reading, having okay, myself back to back. Okay, because I to another area of the house. Yeah. Okay, it's actually later in the year because Jupiter will retrograde before it gets to that degree. So late September, Jupiter will be going into your uh, career house. That's going to be a huge shift in, in ideology and systems for you. It's going to be more. One, the good thing is that it's right before Scorpio. So Jupiter goes into Scorpio in October, on October 10th. And that's going to be a shift with what you're talking about because you have Neptune in Scorpio, which is highly mediumistic, highly intuitive, psychic, and Jupiter will be expanding it even more in October. So that's a time I think that you're really going to let loose. Honestly, Jupiter is going to say, I don't care about anybody else. I'm just going to do what I know I need to do. And that's the time that you can actually move past all this energy. All right. Okay. So Thank I would mark you. late September and October 10th as the dates that are kind of the focus date for you for that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, and I'll keep you're the welcome. show. Oh, okay. That's fine. No, I'll, I won't cut you off. I'll just turn off the mic. So okay. thanks for the call. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Take care. Okay. Uh, 303. Let's see what we have there. 303. Hi. Who is this? Oh, hey there. Uh, my name's hi. Allie, and yeah, hi. That was a, I'm a first time caller. I do astrology oh, wonderful. myself. So. Oh, lovely. Um, I uh, yeah, that was a, the audio quality on your end is kind of weird. I don't know how it sounds this time, but that was a it was kind of bouncy, a little echoey. Anyway, oh really? Just on the call, or is it now as well? No, you sound fine to me. Okay. Um, so I don't know if it was just that particular call. It was a call. call. I think it was just that okay. call because it started when I answered it. But um, give me your birth yeah. information. Yeah, March, uh, March 15, 1957. Okay. What time? Berkeley, California, uh, 11.48 a.m., okay. Berkeley, California. Okay. Wonderful. A lot of E's in Berkeley. <laughs> there we go. I said there are a lot of E's in Berkeley. I'm just trying to make yeah, sure I spell miss, it right. Everyone, yeah, everyone yeah. misses the E between the K. Nah, and there are three of them. Okay, I got it. So you have a cancer rising. You said you know, you're probably uh, yes. well aware of your chart if you do astrology. Yes. So yes. do you want me to focus on something in particular? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's always, it's always, um, it's always delightful to talk to other astrologers. Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, and, you know, I, I, I'm following my transits and all that stuff, too. So, um, But the mm-hmm. big question here is career, getting back into my career, getting career traction. That is the big mm-hmm. goal for my um, 2017. And okay. uh, money. It's, I have got to get some financial flow, some real, right. some real support. Solid. Um, right. Come in. I need to lay a foundation in my life. I am turning sixty in right. two, well, less than two months now. It's about two months. <laughs> congratulations! And, oh well, yeah, I'm kind of was amazed I made it this far. But uh-huh. um, but this is uh, this is the this is the decade to, to correct everything that was effed up during my forties and fifties. <laughs> right, right. Well, it, it, it well, has been a difficult that, decade. But, you know, but the, oh, yeah. the last two decades were, were crap for right. the most part. Not entirely, but nothing I would go back and relive. Mm, so mm, do you do no astrology? Of, Are you professional? Right. Is that what you do for a living? No, I just have a huge passion for it. I've done it okay. for people for free. Okay. 
Wonderful. Um, I could make a sideline living out of it, but that's you could. not really in my card. It's not. Nah. Well, I don't Too know about that. Things, <laughs> okay. That's another call. I have another calling, and it's more important. Okay, it's Saturn like and it. Sag. Yeah, so you have Saturn in uh, the sixth house of Sagittarius, and obviously mm-hmm. you're an educator, and you like your freedom. Uh, second Saturn return, so you're really, like you said, you have to get out there and make your life what you need. That's actually the time. Well, you do take ownership of your life at 27, 28, you know, in the first Saturn return, but the second one I think is when you really become the master of your profession. And so um, are you not working now? Are you working or? Oh, I'm, just doing, I'm just doing stupid jobs because I – Okay. Um, I very menial type jobs because okay. uh, I've done I've made a career out of doing that because of okay. changes in my own career. That uh, it's a long story. I'm not going to get there. Okay. So no, it's fine. I'm not in my career, but I that is where my focus is is getting back uh, into it and um, you will. getting my money flowing again along with that. Okay. It's hard to make a living when you're making minimum wage. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yes. Um, and it's a waste of my intelligence. Yeah. Well, you know, in the chart, April looks a lot better as far as money coming in um, with Mars and Taurus mm-hmm. going into your house of money from career. And you're also right. a Mars and, and uh, Taurus in your chart anyway. And that's, right. so that's the path. Like you really do have that need to have stability around finances. Um, because of the planets that are really triggering your midheaven with Pisces, mm-hmm. it is mm-hmm. it is like you're calling to do something intuitive. And possibly, I mean, like your chart really lends itself to like being a reverend or a pastor or something like that. Do you do anything like that? I know, right? I, I know you're going to say, yeah, I was thinking about doing that. That's like asking, if, does the Pope go out and, and party to midnight in the brothels? <laughs> <laughs> and she has a sense of humor, Saturn and Sag. Good job. <laughs> well, um, I am not the person for anything. No? <laughs> I, mean, really, I use that analogy because that's about as accurate as it is for me to be any, doing anything, even remotely, even just a, even well, a whisper. Of, it's of interesting, a, well, but- Neptune going into your house of career, um, you know, let's see, at 16, you have to wait till 16. It, I mean, you laugh now, but I'm telling you, I can see it in the future that you, you're, if anything, you're a sage, you're a wise woman. So, you know, that might be just as much as you could handle, but um, yeah, 16 degrees in June of 2018, Neptune will be on your midheaven. And you're you're going to be getting more attention for your ability to read and your ability to counsel. And, I, you know, with Pisces, of course, we always have those addictive tendencies. But the opposite of that is awareness. And I really think people with Pisces come in to explore that detachment from spirit, which is a lot of times expressed in addiction and, you know, codependence, those kind of things. So when you say that, like I, I'm getting that you're you're probably like, no, I'm I'm not that person because I do what would not be considered holy or godly. But as Neptune hits your midheaven next year, um, that's going to just make you much more settled because you're going to have Neptune right there uh, going in on your Venus, and the, that's really like your dreams coming true next year. I mean, you've already got a lot of that energy coming in right now because you have Mars and Venus. Um, the problem right now mm-hmm. is that Chiron is also there. So Chiron's mm-hmm. triggering that, okay, so Venus is your desires, and it's like, well, if I do what I desire, then I'll be hurt. And then mm-hmm. uh, Mercury is like, yeah, well, you know, the logic of it says that I can't really make a living that way or I may not be ready to face what I can do. And then uh, Sun is, no, what are you thinking of? You know, nobody's going to come to you because you can do this. I mean, you can't do this kind of thing. Let me tell you, Venus is at the midheaven within two degrees right now, and Neptune is on the way next year. Uh, look for June next year. You are you're going to be doing something that is encouraging people. That's, 
I mean, even though it's not your Saturn in that position, it is the Saturn mm-hmm. house. So it's mm-hmm. going to be right. like, and, and I've been telling everybody with all this Pisces energy and the Neptune and Pisces, pay attention to what your dreams are. And, and, and you're saying that you're very uh, connected and you are, you have Neptune and Scorpio, but if you're not paying attention to it, you're going to be running an uphill battle. Mm-hmm. And um, right. Saturn and Sag, again, it, it's a need to be free, but it's also a need to seek out higher wisdom and higher understanding. And mm-hmm. so if you're starting to focus on that, you will be guided in the right way. You know, especially mm-hmm. Mars and Venus in Pisces right now. It's like, no, no, mm-hmm. no, no, no. The universe is making it really difficult to take action and have something manifest through the physical action. It's saying, mm-hmm. no, you need to be looking at the emotions that are being churned up. You need to be looking at your belief systems and you need to be looking at your dreams because spirit is giving you information through your dreams. So, you know, you can be pragmatic as you try to be, but all those three up there in Chiron in Pisces are helping you heal, helping you become more aware of that psychic side of your career. Now, that being mm-hmm. said, Uranus moves into your house of money, I think I said in 2018 mm-hmm. too, didn't I? I think mm-hmm. it said October. Uh, let me mm-hmm. see. Yeah, and Uranus moves into Taurus also next year, I think. Let's see. Yeah, in May of 2018. So oh, that's Uranus, I mean. okay. yeah, Uranus into Taurus goes, well, not only do you have Uranus moving into your house of money from career, which is good because it means you're going to be autonomous and it's sales. I mean, to me, when I see Aries in how money from career, it's like you could do something retail sales or something emergency or something, you know, the the Aries Mars field. So Mm -hmm. taking Mm -hmm. um, self-promotional action, doing things on the Mm -hmm. Internet like advertising or creating a show Mm -hmm. where you can talk to people, you're going to be promoting yourself, and that's going to help. So by the time it goes in to Taurus, that's when the money comes, but it comes from autonomy. It comes from independence and entrepreneurship because it's Uranus. Mm-hmm. That's the plan going there. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I would be focusing on is building up mm-hmm. a clientele and starting to focus on what spirit's trying to guide you towards. And Jupiter, mm-hmm. you have Jupiter and Virgo. Did you get all the messages mm-hmm. about changing your diet? Um, uh, a year ago? You no, know, that's... You know, that's sort of an ongoing thing, I guess, with me. Okay. You know, I actually, you know, that's, that's I'm aware. You know, I have my ups and downs, I guess, with that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, you have that's Saturn squaring, squaring your Jupiter right, right now. But right. the reason, like I, I've said this a few shows ago, Saturn squaring planets in Virgo both mm-hmm. represent nature and health, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. So right. it, you need to pay attention to that message. I think um, yeah. this year is the year because Saturn will go yeah. retrograde one last time over the summer. And when he goes retrograde, mm-hmm. he's going back – well, he's only at 23 right, 23 right now. But when mm-hmm. he retrogrades, he's going to go back over that square degree. Um, 27, he'll be at 20 – let's see, where is it? Yeah, he retrogrades back to 23. I'm sorry, I'm just looking how far back he goes. He goes to 21. And let's see, he starts at 27, which is an exact square to your Jupiter. So this message, so not only is it going to be around health, it's going to be around the family and your workspace. Okay, so you need to pay attention to what you're doing over the summer from May through August is going to be okay. you're renovating your career and where you're at with, especially I would not be surprised if you move Jupiter leaving the house mm-hmm. of home and family. And then he's going to go mm-hmm. in October, right on top of your Neptune, which is dreams right. coming through. And that's also, okay. So let me just say this money is translated in your chart to value around creativity. You have Leo in the second house, you have Uranus yeah. there, which is autonomy through creative creative means you have neptune Mm -hmm. in the fifth house and jupiter Mm -hmm. will be expanding i've got to do my creative side i have to do whatever it is and and uh Mm -hmm. so scorpio is how you see yourself in relationship to others and your value that others like do you feel valued by others do you see others Mm -hmm. valuing you but you have to get real with yourself about 
how you feel about your value to others. That's when the money will yeah. come. And especially with the Leo in the second house, because that's a relational mm-hmm. sign, you want to connect mm-hmm. and relate to people on a real human level. And mm-hmm. the combination, and then Scorpio is like, I want to merge with you. Leo is, mm-hmm. I want to understand you. Scorpio is, I want to mm-hmm. merge with you. So when Jupiter mm-hmm. gets into Scorpio in the Leo house, man, mm-hmm. you're looking to connect to people and be the person that brings them understanding because Scorpio is the, the psychologist, the therapist. Right. So mm-hmm. you're going to expand that, but it's also in a creative way. And it could be around children. Mm-hmm. You might end up, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. For some reason, I'm feeling like there is a connection to teaching around children or bringing in some energy around not being so serious and not not being the adult necessarily, but just really going and playing. Saturn and Sag wants to play. Jupiter in the fifth mm-hmm. house wants to play. You know, there's a lot of play energy. And when Mars gets to Aries, you got to play. And then you got to also own your own business. So that's what I see for you. Well, that's interesting. Well, thank you so much. I know you got another call. I love listening to the other calls too. So thank you so much. And, <laughs> thank you. You know that. So you know we could talk forever, but uh, but thank we you could. very much for for, for <laughs> you know it's always interesting to talk to other astrologers. So really, yeah. Let me tell you that. also real quick. Uranus in your house yeah. of money and Uranus transit going into your money from career. That's astrology, and the psychology yeah. aspect comes into astrology too. So if you're looking to make it full time. You definitely could, especially coming yeah. up in the next year. Okay? Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. My pleasure. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Let's go to 516. Hi, 516. How are you? Hi. I'm good. Good. So, Who is um, this? I'm wondering if I oh, – my name is Randy. Okay, Randy. Uh, Have you called I'm before? I'm if you could read. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. So. Okay, I don't see you here. So, um, why don't you give me your birth information, then tell me while I'm getting it all set up. So, I mean, tell me what you're. Well, I was here wondering for. if you could if you could um, read my hu- my husband because he's having like this pattern of like getting laid off from jobs. Not his okay. fault. It's just like the company. Every t- job he's had, like the company okay. can't make it, and they've been laying them off. Right. I just want to know what's going on. Oh, God. Is he a Scorpio? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Did I tell you that? That's why. Yet, huh? <laughs> no, go no. ahead. Tell me his birthday. <laughs> uh, his birthday is um, November thirteenth, nineteen sixty-eight. Okay. And what time? Oh, I don't know what time. Okay, so we'll just go for a sunrise chart. That's fine. And where did you say he was born? He was born in Long Island. Okay. Yeah, um, I've definitely noticed a pattern amongst all the Scorpio people, or Scorpio-influenced people who have been going through this cycle of losing their jobs and unable to find another job. So, um, yeah, and I'll get to the reason behind that in a minute. But um, I, I have a quirk in my program that deletes the date I put in when – I put in the place. So could you tell me the year he was born again? 68? 68. 68. Okay, I thought so. All right, there we go. Okay, so, yeah, um, the Scorpio energy is just going – That part of that is because Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, and Pluto is in the house of career or the sign of career. So that's a big part of it. And then he has Neptune at 26 Scorpio and Sun at 21. So what's going on is, and the interesting thing is Pluto is in positive aspect to Scorpio. So it actually is asking him what is his biggest wish for his career. And if he can't find a job or keep a job in the old field, it is my observation that he isn't going for the thing that really makes him happy and really he would prefer to do in his life. On top of the fact that Uranus is at 20 Aries and his natal Saturn is at 19 Aries. So Uranus, which is autonomy, independence, and self-promotion is on his natal Saturn. So what type of work was he doing? Well, he was in sales, but he's also working on doing like a business. And that's uh-huh. not really taking off either. And that's really his his passion that's not right. taking off. Okay, well, um, let me look. It will. 
it's going to take off. So what is, what is your perception of the holdup? What's my perception? I don't, in other um, words, what, what seems to be the problem with it not taking off? Is there not clients? Or... It's, yeah, it's like one of those, um, yeah, there's not clients. It's like he's selling like, um, what is it called? The network marketing kind of thing. And you okay. have to find people who want to like have, want to be, get a business and also believe in the product. And he really right. loves the product. Um, okay. And he's been, you know, sending out, like going on, on Facebook. He's going on LinkedIn uh-huh. and he's like talking to people. And he's okay. doing it. I feel you know like he's he doing a lot to, to like. He needs to find a partner. Hmm? He needs to find a partner because he's got in the money from career is all Libra and Jupiter's there right now. And he's got Mars and Libra, Uranus and Libra and South node and Libra. And does he have a partner? Is his partner supposed to be me? <laughs> um, it can be. Do you do things with the company on a regular basis or on with what he's no. trying to promote? I then mean, I would love to leave you. my. I would love to leave my job and go into business with, but I don't like sales. Okay, so, um, so yeah, he he needs to find someone, and there's also an energy around um, changing where you are living, selling a house. Have you been? Have you moved recently? I did. Okay, because um, Saturn's coming up on his natal Venus. So, like I said in the call before, Saturn will go all the way to 27, then retrograde back to 21, and then go back to 27 throughout the course of this year. When it gets to December, Saturn goes into Capricorn. When that happens, it moves into his house of money. So, that's when things, like right now, he's really being asked astrologically to shore up where he wants to be who he wants to be doing it with. So if it's not working the way he's doing it, then he needs to look to another tack. He may need to do more actual education of the product, which is Saturn and Sag. He may need to tell people more, what can it do for you? Like, what's it going to do? Like educate the client because maybe they're just not getting it. Um, And then over the course of this coming year, he's going to really have to take stock of where he's at with his behavior, is he focusing on the details? Did he is he letting things slip? Because again, um, Saturn and Sag doesn't want to do the details, but I can tell you when Saturn goes into Capricorn, the details are going to become important. So he needs to look at where the focus is, and is he staying focused? You know, or does he feel like, well, if I can't make this work, I'll just move on to the next thing and move on to the next thing and move on to the next thing. He's got Mars and Libra, so. If he has a partner, they can help focus and ground him. And Mars and Libra in the house of money tends to give away money, and he also has Uranus in Libra there. So he probably has a bigger heart, and he's not necessarily recognizing that he needs to take the oxygen mask in first before he gives it to someone else. So, you know, it could be some really deep-seated issues around what he thinks of money. Um, yeah, I think money is somewhat incidental to him. He's got Venus and Sagittarius, and that means that it, it'll just be there. I'm not going to worry about it. But now Saturn is coming up on that Venus and Sagittarius saying, well, you may not worry about it, but now it's time to start acknowledging that what you're views are aren't necessarily working for you so now it's time to renovate that and over the course of the summer he could also need some education so um yeah you've got that going on Mm -hmm. but definitely uranus on saturn is like you you said that money is incidental i don't understand what that means does that mean (laughs) okay that means that he doesn't you know to him, money is like a commodity that can come and go, but it'll be there. He knows it'll be there. Because is that true? Venus, is that what it's showing? That that's, well, that's, that's what Venus that's, at 28 Sagittarius means. It's like the culmination of the Sagittarius energy. And the other side of it is he could also spend money like water and not – he doesn't give it proper value is kind of what I'm saying to keep it coming in. He's very – 
cavalier, like if it comes in, it may go out just as rapidly. And especially with Mars and Uranus in Libra, again, it's, it's, he really, honestly, I can tell you his chart, it looks like he really needs to figure out his interaction with money. And having a partner will really help focus him and ground him. And when Jupiter goes into Scorpio, it's about commitment to that. It's, it's, right now it's yeah, the idea of having this somebody business, help. This, but, business, yeah, this business doesn't really require a partner. So I'm not really understanding that part. Okay. It's not well, like people have partners in it. In the, is it a different business or is it the same okay, business? Well, is it multi-level marketing, it. MLM? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, there is reliance on people downline, correct? Like you, you're trying to build a downline, correct? Yes. Okay, so if he has somebody who he connects with in the organization who of other people selling, he might want to get with them and say, do you want to split an ad? Do you want to um, hold a meeting together to explain this and do something okay. like that, which could help him? Okay, that's kind of what okay. I'm saying. Find ways okay. of connecting to other and integrating the connectedness because he has Libra, which is partners, and he has Uranus in Libra, which is networking, and it's in the house of money from career. So he really needs to, like, networking is kind of a drive of his. He's got Mars right next to Uranus in Libra, which is he's driven to do that. But um, actually, right now, Saturn, as it gets closer to to Capricorn is going to be squaring uh, what he's doing, what his natal planets are in Libra in that house. So he's really honestly being asked to be a little bit more pragmatic about things. And, you know, if it isn't working one way, then you have to change what you're doing, you know? And even though he's very driven to be his own boss, he needs to have somebody else who's also driven the same way he is to kind of compliment him and, do things that he might not be good at where he could be better at the something than the other person. So I would suggest that for him. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, right, well, that's the best you. I have. Like without uh, a birth time, I can only focus on really the, do you know, the like planet. The, ha- the, ha- the selling of the, ha- I mean, the moving is not like a bad thing. I mean, no, no, it just means like if he looks to other areas where we just he we may, just we just moved. You know, so okay, like, this oh is God, I'm going to suggest this for you. Okay, um, okay, go to astro.com and then go down to the travel section. I think I'm going to look it up right now for you, just to tell you accurately what it is because it's really helpful. Um, you go to. Astro.com, and then under free horoscopes, there's a tab at the top that says free horoscopes. You go down to, um, this is a travel one. I can't see it. Oh, there, Astro Click Travel. And then I believe that's the right one. Yeah, and Astro Click Travel, you will have a place where you can enter your birth information and then hit, hit the button that says go. It will show you a map of the world. And you can click where you live now, and it'll on the right side of it, it will tell you what that energy is for that place mm-hmm. based on your birthday. So if you do that, that will help him know what's going on where he's at and if there would be a better place for him. But I wouldn't stress out over it because right now astrological energy is definitely supporting what we're doing, and uh, worry is not going to help. That's just the energy of fear. Okay. So you need to be open to alternatives to whatever could work because if this is the path he's driven to take, you really need to be supportive because he's probably not going to veer off of it. Okay. Anyway, right, I wish you the best. You. You're welcome. Bye. Thanks. Bye. You're welcome. Okay. I'm sorry I couldn't get to anyone else, but I'm also getting a tickle in my throat and I'm going to cough ridiculously right now if I don't end the show so thank you everyone for listening and I will see you here again next week take care thanks for 
stopping by Astro Energy this week. If you would like to get a hold of Shelly Overton, you can get her at astrologerangel.com, on Facebook at Astro Energy or Astrologer Angel. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com with additional music by Ironwood Rain. Check them out on the net at ironwoodrain.com. Hi, this is Maury Moreland Morrison, here to tell you GEICO has more than just great savings. Much more. Yes, while GEICO could help you rack up more moolah faster than you can say metamorphosis, they've also been the fastest growing auto insurer for more than 10 years. That's more like it. Furthermore, GEICO has fast and friendly claim service. That might seem like an oxymoron, but it's not. All the more reason to say no other auto insurer has more more than GEICO. GEICO. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Why trust the parts pros at Advance Auto? Because if there's one thing they know, it's parts. Let's call Advance Auto Parts and Batteries. This is Marquis speaking. Hi, Marquis. I need to change my oil, and I want the best. Okay. Uh, I've got Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic. And how much is that? Twenty-seven ninety-nine. And that's good stuff, right? Yes, sir. Protecting your engine from heat and sludge. You really know your stuff. What's a good time of night to view Neptune? <laughs> Advance Auto Parts. We know everything about auto parts. Now get five quarts of Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic for just twenty-seven ninety-nine while supplies last. See store for details.